Hi, I'm Juan Rivera. I've had over 20 years of residential and commercial construction experience. I've traveled the world and lived around the U.S. Over the years, I've seen and completed many projects, projects both small and large. I'm the owner of Renaissance Development Group, Inc., a full-service construction company, and I know remodeling. Each week, I'll bring you the tips, tricks, and trends of home remodeling and improvement. We'll talk to local contractors and industry experts about the latest new trends for your home and remodeling projects. We'll show you the ins and the outs to make your project easier. So join us for the next 30 minutes on Remodeling Now. Hi, I'm Juan with Remodeling Now. Thanks for joining us for part two of our two-part series with the Beauvoir. Sit back and for the next 30 minutes, enjoy the wonderful sights that we're going to be bringing you. So we're going to the kitchen now. Now we're, now we're going to the dining room. Okay. Not the kitchen. The Not the kitchen. The kitchen was a separate building about 50 That's, feet yes, okay. behind the house. Keep the heat course, away from it. Well, that and the yeah. fire. Right. And, uh, and actually the kitchen burned down <laughs> uh, years ago. We're going to uh, make a replica of that. Uh, the general public does not get to go in here. Okay. Thank you. All right. And everything in here, are, everything is the original pieces. You see the, uh, the food motif on there, the deer, the duck, uh, vegetables on the door. And uh, the china is original, the crystal is original, and furniture is original. And this is the dining room, and we also found out this, I don't know what color you actually call this, a burgundy, whatever, but it's a, it's a uh, finished uh, glaze, they call it. It was painted of a white or off-white, and then they glazed it that color. And so almost absolutely like a faux, faux finish, they call it as well. That's, so that's, that's correct. Kind of, that's correct. Yeah. And I see the finishing that they did on the doors is also done that's, on the This is the, the only room. Well. The panels, yeah, the panels in this room with the are faux oak finish is the only room that they had that in, too, also. Very nice. Yes. Now, you, because this is a more confined area, you don't want to keep a lot of traffic in here, right. especially with the potential of right. uh, somebody unfortunately being able That's to get right. too close That's after correct. the trip, whatever the case may be. That's correct. It's a shame that they all can't see everything, but fortunately, because of the glass and the doors, they are able right. to at least look in. Well, we did have the shutters. We did have the shutters <clears> open, <throat> which were a lot brighter, but it was also, uh, we're, we're afraid of bleaching out correct. curtains and uh, material. Also, the heat. It's unbelievable. I came by here one day two or three times just standing here and it was 100 degrees with those curtains open. And yeah, UV now, is a bad thing for That's Sporting right. Uh, this painting was done by Winnie Davis uh, behind, again, when they peeled the paint back and they believe this was a resort area they had visited and uh, we found that painting underneath and you see the faux marbling down here. And uh, these two Objects here are food warmers. They put the food in to keep it warm in front of the fireplace. How about that? And you're correct, uh, Rick. This does feel it very just much like, like marble. It. Just like it. It's not as cold, obviously, as a, uh, something that's a rock or something that's been finished. But definitely you get that look and that feel of marble. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. It's amazing. This was the pantry or the serving room. We use that at the uh, moment for our uh, smoke alarm, burger alarm all the electronics uh, of the computer for the heating and air, all that's in here. Most of that will be transferred to the new presidential library when we build it, but this is where it's housed right at the moment. And, and then we got the children's dining. You can, maybe you can film that better from in here uh, than you can through the window. Oh, I see, so there's a small area. This was the serving room uh, for the food. This is a ch children's dining area, all original pieces, uh, even the flow blue china. And uh, I don't know what the cutoff age was where they could eat with grown up, but it probably had something to do with keeping their mouth shut and just eating. <laughs> and no food fights. <laughs> Definitely not. Right. Now, Rick, I noticed when that when we walked in the room, this is one of the uh, few rooms, or the only room so far, that we noticed Crown That's that correct. we have in here. That's correct. And this is a little unusual because uh, you have Crown in the corner, which would be Cove. 
then it steps down to a piece, and then you have one that steps back in a few inches that wraps around the ceiling, giving it a, in a, uh, uh, a dimensional look. That's to correct. It. You notice that's what they were copying in the painted correct. rooms in the bedroom. Right, right. The optical illusion of having this. Now, uh, this is wood, I would assume. That's correct. Okay, and then they just painted over it heavily, and of course, over all, all these years. And did you have to replace any of this? Was that all pretty much intact? Uh, no, there's a lot of plaster going in here. This was a heavily damaged room. If you looked at that photograph, that window would have completely blown out right there. Okay. And there was a hole in the floor right here. You see that's new brick? Right. These, are, these were actually on the ground underneath the house. So, uh, but we were fortunate. Again, uh, everything in here received damage, but was restored <laughs> back really better than it was. You can, if you look real hard, you can see a little, difference in the color where the little wave action got on right. the bottom of uh, and it did the wind also move things around considerably beautiful room beautiful room we're now in jefferson davis's bedroom uh he had the only bedroom by the way that he could go on the front porch or the back porch uh all these pieces are original items that belong to him his a shaving stand right here uh, his cigar humidor over in the corner. <laughs> uh, this rocking chair, Jefferson Davis made himself while he lived at Beauvoir. Wow. This piece right here. I believe it was a, a gentleman were supposed to make their own rocking chair. You remember the movie, The Patriot, yes. Mel Gibson, he never could make one. Well, he had a lot of practice. He, he'd fail, tear them up, he? right. Well, this, <laughs> this Jefferson Davis made this one. Uh, the tub over there, the way that worked, you stood in the tub and poured water on your head and that's the way you took the bath. So that's, uh, that's his tub, and then Raina has one that she could sit on in there. How about that? The photographs are his daughter, Margaret uh, Hayes Davis, and Addison Hayes, who uh, gave him his grandchildren. The painting is Verena in her later years. And again, you see up in this corner what the color of the room was prior to the storm and the true color that we have now. So we left that little section in there. And this actually is the original piece too. It had a gas, uh, had a uh, uh, coal oil or kerosene lantern on the top. And this is made out of wood. Wood, uh huh. Right. Which is uh, quite an interesting piece. Unusual, Very unusual. And then uh, of course he had an uh, armoire. That's right. For his clothes. Faux and they didn't, have a, they didn't have a lot of clothes back then. Uh, That's right. Well, closets uh, yeah. were, were not in style or even thought of there. It had one closet. Well, there's two right when you came in, the front door, small right. one. But Verena had one in here, I'll show you in a minute. They got the faux marbling again on right. the fireplace. So they did, a, they did a pretty consistent theme with that throughout they, they every did. fireplace within the home. They did. Okay. And uh, Verena's room was separate. They, they, that's the way they did things in those days. And uh, yes. I, they let the daughters have the big rooms, you know, and they, this was all they really needed. Yeah, because this is a little smaller than the other ones, per se. Absolutely. And this is Verena's room, and of course, her view was of her garden, uh, which we're going to put back after we get the construction finished, a uh, circular garden behind the house. And uh, again, she had a closet. Now this is uh, where he first discovered the faux oak finish by peeling off the white paint. And uh, we left that there to show people that where he found on every door the faux oak finish. And he also took a Q-tip, went through that to the original grain underneath. That's almost a labor of love as well. Absolutely. Because you have to have, it, it's more than just about the money when you're doing something like this because the the intensity and the dedication that oh, it takes man, to do yeah. this is uh, Very tedious. definitely a labor of love. There's no Absolutely. doubt about that. Absolutely. Because these are just magnificent right. doors the way they've turned out. And again, we left the wrong color. This room was painted up there. Right. <laughs> and the right, which we have now. Very nice. And this is her little sewing machine. You turned it right here to sew. And so it's not, not a singer, huh? Not a singer. <laughs> and uh, it's a Edison, I think. Yeah, I think he is one that yeah. uh, came out yeah. with some early sewing machines as uh, well. No, this was a little secretary that's hers. We're trying to work on conserving this spread right here, this bed spread, and it's got several holes in right. it. Right. And uh, we got a conservator down here right now that's, that's going to help us with that. But again, her tub, she could sit down on the edge over there where Jefferson Davis didn't have that little luxury <laughs> and this was done for this work here needlework one of her granddaughters did that for 
1886. Wow. And of course, bathing in those days was not like what we no, used to No, today. no, no, man, that was a luxury. Uh, that's where perfume got invented, they claim, you know. <laughs> the French did us a good favor on that that's one. That's right. Uh, this was her little, when she got elderly, pick her flowers, it's built in with her cane, so she could put her flowers cane in there. Cane and the little basket right. with it to, right. to carry those. Yeah, and of course that's the bed warmer. Very interesting. And of course back-to-back -back fireplaces, mm -hmm. keeping one chimney together so that that's you can correct. open it out. That's correct. So we're, we're underneath the house over in Beauvoir, and welcome back to Molly Now. I'm your host, Juan, with Rick Fort. And uh, Rick, you're explaining to us one of the reasons why the house was not completely blown away. Because of the, uh, the way it was constructed, and uh, primarily they say one foot by one foot support beams on top of the brick column. They had what I call a jigsaw cut. You see, and they fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. And when they were fit together, there was a hole in the middle, and they took a wood peg and drove it in, and it locked it together, and it locked every, it's put together like that all the way around. Now this is a replacement support beam. You see the branding iron, it says 2007 Hurricane Restoration, is what that says. Right. And to let people know in the future that that was a replacement beam. An original beam is right here behind us, and you see the hand-hewn Correct. Uh, beam where they uh, carved it out and they also have the jigsaw cut right here uh, with a wood peg in there. Now all these columns were uh, eight feet high and when they put the support beams on here to uh, put the structure up, obviously with this soil some were lower than others so right. you see wood chocks under every mm -hmm. column where they leveled it up with wood chocks. And you also see uh, rebar is put in right here. Right. And it goes all the way to the roof uh, right here. The columns that were rebuilt have rebar inside of the, inside of the column, two of them. They do the same thing, go through the uh, support beam and lock down with So it. these go through up some of the interior walls. That's right. So kind of like a go bolt system that That's they correct. talk about. That's right. Which holds it from the tops being strapped all the way down continuous to the bottom. Here. That's correct. Now originally there was a set of limestone down there there were oyster shells. You cannot find oyster shells anymore. Those little ones, you know, and right. when you do they want a fortune for them. That's the real They used to want to there. give them to you, you know. But there was a fireplace down here. It was kind of used as a uh, the uh, family uh, room, they stored his boat and things like that underneath the house, but it was also an area that the family uh, didn't want to be on the ground level. And you could feel the breeze through here now. Say, still, it would still be cool though. That's right, it would be, still cool. be cool. Absolutely. And the only uh, structural support you could see are these X beams on either side, about uh, right at the front of the house to uh, give support. And that's for shear to go back and forth like this, this wave. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And you've got uh, them bolted in. I assume you guys have a concrete, uh, concrete foundation rim. here. That's right. And then they're bolted up through into this massive 12-inch uh, by 12-inch uh, right. uh, beam that you're talking about right. with steel. And this looks to be pretty uh, good-sized steel there. It is, yeah. And you can see the rebar on the outside of the original columns. The rebar on the outside. Okay. And then uh, the replica, I mean the uh, replica, if you want to call them that, uh, have the rebar inside, which all these have. This is the front porch, of course, that was ripped off. And you can see the, so the replacement beam, and the, again with a cut. Correct. And the peg. Yep. And then the original right here behind us uh, with the cut and the peg. Very interesting how they do it. You see the rough edges because they didn't have a planer like That's we right. have today in terms of being electric. Absolutely. I mean, they had planers, but not to the extent we have sure. it today. Yeah. Uh, everything was done it, by that, hand. It was that meaning. technique held this house together. It's amazing how things that are old, how we think we're so advanced. I know, absolutely. Some things that are so simplistic from uh, the we, old days, 
that stand and stand the, the test of time. If we live back, how many hurricanes? If we live back in those days, we'd last about a month, maybe. Probably. And then you said how many hurricanes? Thirty or something. Thirty. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's absolutely amazing. And I see also you have a, a fire sprinkler. System. Fire sprinkler system. Yeah. That's required uh, protection for the house, and uh, it's one of those new ones with a dry thing. They got where it cannot be any accidents. They got to call it a dry system. Right. Uh, the water comes in that, after the fact. That's once it's, once it's triggered. That's uh, right. For the smoke detector, and there's liquid or something in there. I think when that's it gets correct. too hot, that's then right. it breaks. That's right. And then that pushes through a gas, and then opens up and goes and right. and does what it does. That's and correct. And uh, so that's another security system uh, in case something, God forbid, happens in terms of Absolutely. a fire or an accident. Absolutely. Uh, that we, we try to cover say. all the bases. Absolutely. We, we have learned our <laughs> lesson. Again, you know, we were like everybody else on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. We didn't think anything could be Camille, and we were wrong. Right. Yeah. Well, so. you know, this turned out to be the perfect storm. Right time, high tide. A very large storm, slow very moving. slow moving storm, Absolutely. and when you add all those things together, it turned out to be just a devastating process, which devastated the whole coast. Absolutely, I know we do a lot of work, our company, Renaissance Development Group, in New Orleans, and we were helping out with the Habitat for Humanity, and you know, in the Upper Ninth Ward there and the Lower Ninth Ward, I should say, yeah. you see how high the water oh, got, yeah. Yeah. and all the different things that happened, and of course, uh, even it's amazing how the French Quarter got no water because oh, they built it up on high. Well. I went down to Memorial Hall, which I told you where the painting is of the house, and the fellow that works in there I've talked to over the years. And I was down there in 2006, right after the storm, and uh, for a uh, convention. And I said, "What? Well, what actually flooded down here?" And he got an 1870 map of New Orleans, a great right. river. Uh -huh. And he said, "You know, we're known as the Crescent City. This is where the the city, where the river turns." Correct. And mm -hmm. he said, "That's the high ground right, right. there." He said, "Here's the French Quarter." He said, what does that say out there? I said, swamp. He said, that flooded. And then, they got, you got what you were <laughs> looking flood, for. Right. Exactly right. Yeah. So, and that was amazing. greater New Orleans. <laughs> right. And, uh, so it was a good lesson for all, and I'm glad that you guys have sure. taken advantage of it. Oh, absolutely. And I realized doing the, the right things cost money at times. Absolutely. We, uh, we, we had a, um, a talk with FEMA, and the way they operate, it, we missed the golden opportunity for fundraising because, I say that, because if we raise funds right after the storm, FEMA would subtract what they would give us. Oh my goodness. So we wanted to get all the money at one time so we could get this project over with. And mm -hmm. we didn't know, you know, we're talking about $4 million. So, but since then they have told us that if we get people that just donate to Beauvoir and don't designate it for anything for operating right. money, right. we can do that. So we do encourage donations, money and items in kind. And uh, if artifacts. somebody wants to do it, how do they go about doing that? Is there, is there a website off your website? www.beauvoir.org and we have all that information on there. We have Friends of Beauvoir, which is a, uh, we set up for people that want to help Beauvoir. We've got different levels, corporate levels to individual levels. Okay. Uh, but we, we really spell out what we need. Uh, we have people giving us artifacts all the time. Um, and uh, of course cash donations and, and we do give credit well, 5013C, we do give tax credit for people right. that make sizable donation, or any donation, really. So you know, and we realize that times are difficult, especially with the economy that we're in, mm -hmm. but we always want to encourage everybody to help where they can, because even people say, oh, well, my $1 or $2 really won't make a difference, but it does. Yeah. Because if you had 10,000 people give you a dollar, yeah. there's $10,000. Absolutely. So Absolutely. we want to encourage everyone to help where they can to help Beauvoir and the, the wonderful job that you guys are doing and in terms of what you've already completed. Mm -hmm. Now, what's up in the future here? Well, uh, we're waiting, uh, hopefully, in the next three weeks. The, uh, we had to make a couple adjustments to the blueprint for the presidential library we're going to rebuild. And we think that building will be somewhere in the $8 million range. Wow. And uh, so as soon as they're finished with a couple adjustments on the height of the building, actually, uh, we can put it up for bid and get started on that and it'll take a year and a half to build that building. And we're also going to put all the outbuildings eventually that were behind Beauvoir House back. Now, we had the kitchen, which we uh, hope to get first, because that will also house the public restrooms. The restrooms were under the house before the storm. Right. And But now uh, we want to get those back, obviously, for the uh, tourists to have regular restrooms. We're going to put a replica of the barn and the carriage house, which will be the director's house. The facade will be carriage and barn, uh, well, the barn and the carriage house. And then the foreman's house 
and the uh, servants' quarters. And uh, there are about five outbuildings, but FEMA will only pay for what was here. So we'll have to get grant money to right. do that and donations to do that. Well, Rick, again, I'd like to thank you so very much for thank spending the time with us. I know you got a, uh, you're got very uh, judicious with your time and it's yes, valuable sir. to you. You have a lot on your plate. I want right. to thank you for spending time with us. And take a minute or two and just share with our audience how they can uh, make donations to you, where your website is, and a phone number to, to get a hold of you guys. Absolutely. Our website is www.bowa.org. Uh, we have a organization we set up called Friends of Beauvoir. You can enter at a, uh, a corporate level all the way down to an individual and uh, or just make a contribution uh, in kind or cash to Beauvoir. But it's, uh, we are 5013C, so we do give tax credit for any donations. But uh, we depend strictly on tourism for our income, and we need all the help we can get. And we appreciate your interest. I've come in here today, and uh, welcome to Beauvoir, and come back to see us. Well, again, we'd like to thank you for that. We, uh, you know, with my my love of history, for me, this was something that I must do. Absolutely. And I'm glad that we have an avenue that we're able to get it out, and our show, Remodeling Now, to be able to show and bring this to people so they, you know, Absolutely. like you were just telling me a while ago, people live around, they don't come, but like I said, we want to thank you for joining us. It was an exciting time visiting here at the Beauvoir, and we urge you guys to come out and see us. Thanks again. <laughs>